one of the things I, I love about Joe is Joe Rogan is I went and saw him at uh, I was in Utah with my parents and <clears throat> said come down come down to the forum you got to see this and I'm like ah, you know I'm, I was 50 minutes away <laughs> Finally, I, I come down and I'm I'm just standing in the wings and watching my friend perform for 14,000 people wow. okay I was stuck in traffic I was going the back way and I was still stuck in traffic and I'm like what's this traffic oh they were coming to see my friend okay wow. so his fame is as big as it gets but I got to tell you, man, I got to tell you, what I saw, which is probably going to hit soon, that, that special is as good as anything he was doing that got him to the game. Wow. wow. And that's called hunger, that he's always stayed hungry. He's always stayed uncomfortable. You know, Tyson was talking, um, these guys were saying, you're saying $30 million doesn't make you happy? And he looked at these guys and he said, so he's, he's got these great nuggets. He goes... He said, God has a way of getting back at you by giving you everything you want wow. before you can handle it. And I, I was like, damn, man. So it's, it's like it's the same thing. The wolf at the door is luxury, not but, struggle. But that's why, you know, Joe's the goat. You know, yeah. the, Joe is the goat of this space, period. You're like, if, you, if you're talking, uh, <laughs> what's the debate right now? John Jones, right? The whole conversation. He's the goat. And, hey, you know, did you hear what he said today? It was very interesting what he no. said today. He says, I believe God put me in this world to never lose. He says, I am destined to never lose. He says, I'm a, I'm a different breed that I'm never going to lose a fight. That's John. By Damn. the way, that's a pretty heavy quote. That's a quote. heavy quote. Yeah. If he I'm, believes if, it. If, if, yeah. That's all that matters, by that's the way, it. right? So, but Cyril Gahn's no you, joke. You, you got a John Jones. You got a, you got a MJ. You got a Brady. You got a Joe Rogan. Okay? He's in that space on where he's at. But Joe, this is the picture, by the way. I don't know if you remember that. In the, uh, this is from the 90s. The two, it, I just sent it to Rob. I'm like, show this square thing. square-jawed kids. Show the pictures. Can you zoom in or no? We got to make sure. Look at this. Uh, That's you and I remember, I remember Look exactly when Look that was. Wow. Where were you guys going? We were coming back from from uh, from doing stand-up. I Are think you guys it, in an Uber in the 90s? Is no, that no. In? We were in we were in my friend's car. I think we were in my friend Marie Mizrandino's car. Wow. In fact, and he had just performed. I think I'd done a thing, and then he had done like 45 minutes and crushed. And uh, what, what year do you think what, this was? Where were that you? was probably literally 1997. I don't know when that was. Man. What, 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 I've known him since 95. No social media, no nothing. No. Just lucky to have a snap. You know, one of those. No. It looks like you guys are cameras. on your way to a library to read some books. It looks like you guys are not causing any <laughs> not havoc. No, no, not at all. I can't not see that happening at all. Not us. Not at us. Is that LA? It's the feeling I get. That was in New York City. That's New York. God, Swingers movie right there. That's right. God. Yeah. I remember that so well. I actually remember that. It's so weird that I can remember that. How far I, were you into your career at that point? How far was Rogan into his I had comedy done, career? I was on a show called Mad TV. Yeah, of and, course. And uh, I, I can't remember, but I and I'd done some stuff, you know. But uh, Joe was doing. Joe was done with. I think he was done with news radio then. He's doing Fear Factor at that point. Nope, nope. He wasn't doing any of that. He was, yeah, because uh, that because that was ninety five to ninety seven for yeah, Mad TV. He was doing stand up back then. I don't, I don't remember what he was. Was doing. there anything about Rogan at that point? Yes. That yes. was like, you're going to be the goat of the fundamental everything. fundamental difference between Joe and I is this. Yeah. I suffered from wishful thinking, and I suffered from something. Uh, I was very positive, and I was not afraid of the world. I had, an, I had an upbringing that made me safe. I never catastrophized things. I was always like, it'll always work out. You know, I, I had an arrogance when I was a young man, which was the idea that I was one of God's favorites, in a way. I worked hard. I did yeah. all right in my life. But I always had this sort of idea that, you know, you don't have to... I always wanted to be the guy. Who, I, I never, I couldn't stand sitting a bench in anything. I had to be, you know, I had to be involved. I wanted to be the people. I wanted to be the guy you're talking about, not that I was talking in the game, whatever it was. But, but um, I was never as honest with myself. I was always honest, but not honest the way he was. He was brutally honest with himself, because Joe grew up in a world where he only had himself to rely on. He grew up in a world that was dangerous from the age of about nine on. It, it was only him, man. And I didn't grow up that way. So Joe is always afraid of the world. Joe was very aware of how bad it could be. It was like being, mm. it was like um, somebody comes out of war and realizes you, you're having that, you're complaining about those dinner rolls. Yeah, is that what you're doing? Talk to somebody who came from a, from a war-torn country mm -hmm. and, and watch how grateful they are, but also watch how hard they work. Man, fear and, and the idea that you never want to go back to that thing over there is a very powerful motivator. So, you know, and he's the kind of guy also who had the imagination 
and um, and to, to realize what he was able to become. He 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 felt his own potential, and he and he figured out a long time ago that if I work harder than somebody else, more importantly, if I'm consistent, if I'm really consistent, and I'm really honest with my shortcomings, I'll get ahead. And he was never not intense that way. But I would say, to it to add to that. The most important thing was probably his brutal honesty with everyone around him and himself. That guy was never, I remember, I remember when we were, we were doing, when I started doing Mad, um, the Fighter and the Kid, we start getting sponsors and sponsors were coming to us and we had a, a long conversation about the importance of only letting people that sponsor you be the kinds of brands you believe in. If you take shortcuts, it's going to be a bad situation. Great and we used to call it we used to call it the pesky truth. We'd call it, and sometimes we'd, we'd we'd be talking and we'd fudge some data. And I remember this. And he'd go, he'd say he said yeah. I asked him a question. Yeah, the answer was no. And he goes, no. I mean maybe the answer is no. <laughs> we would always you hold each other to account. And and more than anybody else, he was always the guy who would say to me, "You're bullshit. You're bullshitting yourself." You're not working hard enough. Whatever it was, he was that friend. You, you know, you know what's the, you know what's the. It, it, there's different ways you measure someone's success, right? Okay, so we're talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson. He says the four things on how to measure whether someone's going to be successful. It's what grades in school, you know, ambition, social, how they're good with people, and the last, how they bounce back, right? Okay. What else can you, you know, hey, how you measure success for somebody who's a great parent? Well, watch their grandkids. That's how you measure if they were a grandparent, great parent or not because they raise great kids who raise great kids, right? Uh, uh, one of the ways that it, it's very, very, uh, it's not talked about enough. You know the saying, um, you are the average of the five people you hang out with or whatever, you know, that whole conversation? Yeah. Fine. We give that conversation. But, but, is it really five or is it really one person in that five that's holding everybody together at the highest level of standards? And it's that one flipping annoying guy that you love. Sick. That's right. That that's one question, person. Man. That's a leader. It's not five. I am convinced it is not five. It's impossible to be five. Right. In the group of five, there is an alpha. That alpha sets the tone. And everybody eventually says, he's the alpha. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it or not, he's the alpha of the group. And then the alpha, you try to bullshit the alpha, and the alpha says, yeah, you're full of shit. It's not going to happen. The alpha, you try to convince, yeah, what about we do this? Yeah, I don't know about that. It's not going to happen. So some people can't take that. So you sit there and say, screw this guy. Who the hell does he think he is? You filter out. No problem. You were never meant to be in that group because you can't. Uh, you think you are the alpha. You're not the alpha. You wish you were the alpha. You don't do what the alpha does to be the alpha. Joe's an alpha. It's very simple. Joe's the alpha. When I uh, was with Tate, I pulled him aside. I said, listen, I, I really like your brother. You know, I really like how he is with you. You know, Tristan. I said, but to me, he knows you're the alpha. He says, you think so? I don't know if you remember this. I said, no, I, th I think he knows you're the alpha. And he gives you that respect, right? Even with DJ Khaled and uh, who's the other guy? Fat that Joe. We, Fat Joe, where yeah. Fat Joe says, Khaled's younger than him. He's my young, but he's the alpha, right? Mm -hmm. Each group has that. If you can find a friend like Joe. But there are good alphas and there are bad alphas. Of course, of course. No, the, there's a difference. The, the, the bad yeah. alpha is a bully. I mean, yes. I, 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 and he's not dealing with the truth. No, he's not. The a, good he, alpha keeps everybody, they keep them in line with the truth. Yeah, it's not, and it's not, about, it's not about them. Like, he yeah. doesn't need the credit. Like, a, a real alpha doesn't need other people to tell him they're an alpha and, hey, Right. I constantly need confirmation. You know, yeah. a bad alpha needs constant confirmation. A real alpha, you don't need confirmation. The literature backs you up on everything yeah. you said there. Men, men delineate authority very quickly, and they, the, they, they had to. You know, for millennia, we came. I always have this joke about, but it's true. With men, the, the, there is there is one. When a man meets another man for the first time, there's only one primary question in the room. And there's protocol. Hey, how you doing? Everything. But at the end of the day, when a man meets another man, when you strip it all down, when a man looks at another man, the only thing going on in their brains is, could I kill this mother? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. If we're in a room naked, who comes out first? And everything's in the negotiation. Why you got to be naked? Yeah, yeah. Well, Why? because this That's how I fight. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.